Hello again Leeds United fans, hope you're all doing fantastically well. It is Connor here and we are back with uh, the three things that we learned and we're going to be doing that today uh, because I've got just got a good feeling and you want to carry on talking about Leeds United don't you and everything's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, the three things that we learned. Keep it in your comments in the section below. I hope you've checked out the Luke Ayling videos which we managed to film in the COP. Um, a lot of you are asking, is that you? Who jumped on Archie Gray? Um, I, I got near to him, I didn't jump on him. That uh, would be a bit strange, I'm 30 years old, he's 18. Uh, but yeah, uh, we did we did dive on the billboard and it was great fun. Uh, so shout out to all of you in the South Stand who joined me up there. Um, but yeah, let's get into it, shall we? So, a good performance from Leeds. I don't think it was one of our best. I don't think any of us would uh, admit that it was our best performance either. Um, it was one of those where it just had to get done and everybody in the South Stand was saying, look, Two goals on the top, that's what it was. Leicester had just been beaten earlier on in the day as well, which was, I don't know, it was sort of, it was celebrated by Leeds fans as well, you felt, um, but it was a bit, it was a bit of an interesting celebration because obviously Chelsea were playing Leicester, but yeah, I feel like us and Leicester are just going a lock ahead that much that any result against Leicester matters <laughs> for mentality, but... I felt that today, overall, there was some really good performers. I felt there was some solid performers. And I wanted to start off by talking about Willie Nonto and his level um, and what he's done. Let me just rearrange that. Um, what he's done in terms of coming in. It's this Leeds United set up in replacement of Dan James, sort of January, February time, where he has been really, really good. Um, in terms of the rotation between him and Dan James, the, because a lot of what you would get normally is one player sulking. You would get another player maybe out of form. But the beauty of this season with Leeds United is this just isn't happening. Every player, I'd even look at Jaden Anthony. Jaden Anthony's first night, uh, last full 90 minutes, he got two assists against Chelsea. You know, Matteo Joseph, two goals against Chelsea. You know, Archie Gray in central midfield, man of the match against Chelsea. You know, Connor Roberts coming in at right back. Performances, he's played, what, four games? That you can probably judge him on in terms of minutes and assist and a goal. You know, Sam Byram coming in, putting in a really decent performance the other day. Junior Firpo coming in and being okay today, but you know, he should he should have had uh, probably more than one assist today. This is what I'm trying to talk about. The collection of performance has been brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and something that we can really hold up and be proud of as Leeds United fans because it's got us to this stage where Daniel Farker is has managed to create an atmosphere in that dressing room, an environment in the dressing room where every one of them is dying for the shirt. Sack for self, Billy Bramner. And it feels every single one of them is dying for the shirt at this moment in time. When I say dying, it, it sounds graphic. It sounds a little bit too far. But what I mean by that is on the football pitch, they're giving everything. I saw Willie Nyonso. At one point today, Archie Gray was dragged out of position and Willie ran all the way back, was doubled up on and managed to shepherd the ball out of play with a much bigger left winger peering down on him and Willie used his body, ran all the way back from an attacking position, which he should do, but a lot of, a lot of players don't do that and start pointing the blame. And especially with the position that Willie Nyonso was in at the start of the season, he's done a full, a full switch around. A full switch around. And what I will say is I never sort of went at him because I, I did feel that his ability would get us out of this division. I said it at the time. I said, you know, his division, his ability, I'm not going to judge him too much on it. I'm going to be supporting him as soon as he's back, really. And I was. And I thought he took the mantle a little bit today. I thought Crew was decent, but I thought Willie was probably the best winger on the pitch for Leeds United. So, yeah, it's great to see the rotation working. And what I would like to say is, you know, I've spoken a lot about Pascal Strauch, but I think it, it, it deviates a little bit away from the special partnership that is Ampadu and Rodon. Joe Rodon is... <laughs> at points, and you guys will know what I mean, it's no disrespect, it feels like he's a one-man defence at points. I'm not saying he is because that is discrediting Ampadu, but Ampadu you'll see him a lot of the time is venturing into midfield uh, because it's his natural position. You always see him getting hold of the ball and carrying it. Joe Rodon is just everything of your old school defender you know old school defender you'd rather be Charlton's he just loves defending it's his bread and butter none of this modern rubbish and that's not to discredit Joe Rodon because I actually think his passing out from the back since Strauch has been out and the reliance has been on him a little bit more to balance out Ampadu 
and it's not just been purely on one player, has actually got a lot better. And I think you've seen Joe Rodon's development get a lot better there. His passing out from the back was really, really good today. But in terms of just a proper centre-back who would fit into any era of English football, he's exactly that. And, you know, is he the best loan player we've had since Ben White? You'd probably say, yeah. He just screams Leeds United as a footballer as well. You know, all our values, our ethos. He's played pretty much every single minute like Ben White did as well. And the beauty of going into next season is we're going to be in a much stronger position to sign him because, obviously, of the 15 to 20 million price tag that's been quoted, which is just fantastic. So, I'm really, really happy with what I'm seeing from Joe. And it, as I say, it's not a discredit on, on, uh, on Ethan at all. I'm just buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing that he's here and he's available, he's dependable, reliable. You know, reliability has so many things attached to it. It's performance, his form, it is being available, as I've just mentioned, and he is a week in, a week out. And Purdue next to him. I mean, just these two coming in as two additions. You've got two captains, two captains, and they just never drop their performance. And it's always eight out of ten. And I think the funny thing is, when you look at Ben White in that Bielsa era, there's no discrediting Liam Cooper. And there's no discrediting Pascal Strauch, uh, you know, at that level. And obviously Berardi was there as well, wasn't it, to partner him. But Ben White spent so long at defensive midfield and then he, you know, got sent back. But he did, in my opinion, he never had nowhere near the calibre of centre-back partner that Rodon has and Ampadu has with one and the other. And also when Strauch's been in there, he's much better as a 24-year-old now than what he was back then. So the whole level of the defence has massively gone up. Another sort of thing that I learned today, so the, the, we've got the Rodon thing, we've got William Yonso, who's just, you know, it just exempt, it sort of amplifies how good the rotation's been. I also wanted to talk about Glenn Kamara. And the reason I wanted to talk about Glenn Kamara is because a lot a lot of times on this channel, I'm, 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 I'm pressurising the midfield a lot to do a lot more. And I'm also press, pressing on Glenn Kamara to shoot. And I think, Adding that to his game, Jesus, wow, you could have some player there. And I remember when Rangers sold him to us, there was a lot of, he doesn't do enough in the final third. And we actually did a, a bit of a, a free a, a discussion with a, a lad that never went up on the channel, actually, a Rangers fan who was saying the exact same thing. It's, it's having that handbrake on in these key situations. Joy to watch. He really is a joy to watch. And I love seeing him on the football pitch and... His elegance in terms of being, you know, pressure resistant, moving moving beyond a midfield person who's pressurising him. It happened two or three times today. And gallivanting, marauding, you guys know I love that word, into the final third and making almost that 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 transition look so easy and so seamless. Um, and that's why I call him the silky smooth operator. But what maybe a lot of fans can't do is, I, I uh, you know, and, and a lot of you fans can do as well, but I can look at a player, I can love him, but I can still criticise him, you know? Believe it or not, I did criticise Mark Rocker quite heavily. <laughs> and I loved, I lo and I love uh, Glenn Kamara, but I will criticise him, you know? And that's not to, to bash him down or anything like that. It's constructive, all of it's constructive. Um, and it's my opinion, you know? And I think there's certain elements he can get better in. There's certain elements that, you know, Mark Rocker could definitely have developed in back in the day. Um, just using him as an example, because everyone thinks I adore him. <laughs> but... Kamara has like there's a few elements where he needs to improve but overall as a championship player he is superb and, and you won't get much better in an almost I wouldn't call him an eight position but maybe a six position than someone like Glenn Kamara um, and his ability to get into that an advanced six position maybe but his ability to get into that next level his ability to get to that next level I think is, is definitely there and it can be harnessed under a really good coach and Daniel Farker is definitely proving to the world that he can develop players when you look at individuals like Joe Rodon from the start of the season, in my opinion, Ethan Ampadu even, Dan James, they've all definitely gone on to a different level, in my opinion. You know, we can pick apart their attributes and, and what they're doing on the pitch, their capabilities on the pitch, I think they are shining through is even better than earlier on in the season in terms of like consistency and just general the general upward trajectory of, 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 of performances. But yeah, I'd just like to shout out Glenn Kamara because I think there has been moments where I think I've mentioned earlier that Gruev, I, I, he does probably frustrate me more than any 
<laughs> any Leeds midfielder because it is just side to side and those those balls are on all the time to just really wrap your foot around it and get it out to an on or Somerville. But I do think when you when you really watch the game, there's a lot put on Glenn Kamara in that midfield. There's a lot put on him because if you think about it, if Grubb isn't moving forward whatsoever, there's a lot of onus put on Glenn Kamara to then move, move Leeds up the pitch. There's Rutter in that number 10 position, of course, but to move Leeds up the pitch from a midfield standpoint, Glenn Kamara does a remarkable job. And I just want to give him his flowers as well because what we want to do on the One Leeds fan channel is talk about these players and if there's constructive criticism needed, definitely discuss it and give your opinion, but also give them the flowers when they fully deserve it. But I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. Check out the Luke Ayling video and the video from the ground. It's been an absolute pleasure, everybody. We'll be back with another video tomorrow, and I'll see you in a bit from One Leeds HQ.